Okay, so let's take a look at Maya's file menu. I'm just going to click on that dashed line there just to break this menu off so it's visible at all times. Um, at the top here, we've got new, open and save. This is all fairly standard stuff and available in almost any application. It's pretty rudimentary, really. Um, we always want to um, create something new or open something that already exists or save something that we've currently got open. Um, this translates very easily into many applications, but um, and so Blender is going to be no different here. But uh, the kinds of scenes that we're working on here is the Maya ASCII or a binary file, depending on whether uh, you want the file to be easier to debug, but slightly larger or quicker to open with an MB file, but um, not as easy to debug. Um, in Blender here, we've just got the one type of file. We've got our um, blend file, basically. It's just a dot blend. Um, currently, what we're viewing here is a filtered view. Um, we can see at the top here, we get this kind of filter icon. Um, currently, we've, uh, we're filtering just to be able to see folders and other blend files. And there's some other options here across the top. Um, if I just uncheck the filter so we can see all files within that um, folder, that just doesn't happen to be actually very much, but there is these other types of blend files, this blend one and blend two. Um, these are basically just the same as the blend file, but these are indicative of the um, incremental saves. Um, this is so basically we just keep two incremental saves. Each time we save, it overwrites the second one and moves the first one down. Um, we can see some of the settings for this within the user preference which is also on the file menu, which is down here. Um, we can see all the um, shortcuts here on the side as well. So this is Control, Alt and U. This is also just another window, by the way, um, which we can just find here. We can actually see that there's user preferences there. But uh, for now, I'm just going to open this with uh, this option here. And if we go to the file tab of this user preferences, we can see down here we get save versions too. Um, this is basically the amount of our incremental files, so the amount of blend followed by a number files that we would find in that directory that we were looking at just a moment ago. There's also recent files there, 10, um, which would be this open recent, so that would go up to 10 and uh, then start overwriting um, the other ones that would display in this list. Um, so that's the new open and save. Next in the file menu here in Maya, we've got archive scene. This will just take all external data like texture files, for example, and then um, put them in a zip file along with the Maya scene uh, with an appropriate folder, which reflects the actual folder in which all the files are taken from. Um, in Blender, we can kind of uh, find the same kind of equivalent here under the file menu. Uh, it's just right at the bottom here, external data, and then pack into .blend file. Um, note that that is, um, the blend file is a kind of archive file in itself, so sort of akin to a zip or a RAR file in a way, um, or at least in the way that Blender would uh, be able to read it. Um, we'll see some more information about that shortly, but um, this is basically just the equivalent for the archive scene, and uh, this, this is where we can see it in Blender. Okay, so let's take a look at the import and export options. Um, just click on this option box here. We can see the various different file types, uh, things like Maya scenes. We've got OBJ there. We've got um, FBX and Collada and a whole host of others. Um, that list can actually be extended with the settings and preferences menu. We can see the plugin manager here. Just click on that. We can see the various different other options here. Uh, we can see the, the FBX, for example, that is uh, loaded and uh, will auto load. So it will be available by default. Uh, the OBJ I've actually switched on here, but it's not available by default at the moment until we check the auto load at least. Uh, and there's obviously a whole host of others and various different types of plugins as well. Um, in Blender, the, if we just switch over there now, we can see in exactly the same place, we under the file menu, we have our import and export options. And in particular, we have these various different file types. We can see uh, the OBJ there and the Collada file types, and there's an FBX there on export. There isn't an FBX on import, by the way. I think that might be being worked on at the moment though, but um, it isn't there by default, at least at the moment. Uh, again, that list can be extended with the um, essentially Blender's version of plugins, which are called add-ons in this instance. We can see this tab here. 
Um, I've actually filtered this list to show just the import and export that we can see there. And we can see we have the uh, 3DS format and the FBX format there are um, checked. Um, down here we have the OBJ uh, checked as well. These are all the uh, default settings. I haven't actually uh, checked any further ones on here at the moment. So we should expect the same list in um, your version of Blender. Um, or unless they've changed it for future versions at least. Um, the something to note about this import and export is that um, it isn't uh, listing a blend file here. Um, this is because we don't import and export from uh, blend files. What we would do instead is append. Um, so if I just click on append in this instance, I'm just going to go up a few folders here. We can see uh, this monkeys.blend file here. Uh, as soon as I just click on this in Maya, you'd probably just expect the whole thing to then um, be imported, but in this instance we get a file structure. Uh, the re the, a, a moment ago uh, we were just mentioning during the archive section that a blend file, at least a blender anyway, uh, will view sort of as its own archive format and this is basically what we mean here. We can see this folder structure. We can go to object within this folder structure for example to see all the various different objects that were in that blend file in this instance, it's actually just this one file, but we could select them all if we wanted to essentially import the whole scene. Uh, if we just wanted the one individual object, we can just select that, but um, there's only one to choose from here in this instance. Uh, so we can just now link and append from that particular library. And um, we can see it's basically just this um, curve type, uh, this uh, NURBS curve, um, which we can see here. If we just select it, we can see the um, the, this essentially just this simple curve there, just a circle, um, but we don't need that in the scene at least at the moment, so we'll just delete that. Uh, but that's basically the uh, importing and exporting um, and uh, the various different options that we have there and the equivalents from Maya shown in Blender. Finally, in this brief overview of the file menu and the Blender equivalents, just like to take a quick look at the references. Um, this basically allows us to work with multiple scenes, especially if other people are working on other objects and you can kind of reference in all the other scenes and just have a kind of a global scene that you just check things in. Or perhaps you're working on a part of a, a level and uh, somebody else is working on another part and you both want to be, have uh, each other's work updated, but you don't want to be able to accidentally select what each other are doing or um, anything of that kind of nature. Uh, basically in Blender, uh, what we can do is use the uh, very similar dialog as uh, the append, uh, but it's just the link instead. So if we just click on link there, what we can do is we can just click on that same object we were just looking at from within the previous blend file that we were demoing um, and just make sure this link is on there. And then we can just uh, click on the link append. We can see that we get this slightly blue um, uh, wireframe to this particular object and in the outline if we check that out we can see we get this little arrow icon there um, just to show that that is um, linked and if I just pre press the plus icon there we can see we get the mesh data for that object as well and we can see that's also linked. Um, we can also see that we can't toggle any of the visibility of things yet we can for the one above. Um, so this is basically completely locked, but at least we can see what's happening if another artist happens to be working on that particular object and uh, we don't want to be able to accidentally select it or um, change anything in that scene. Um, if we want to be able to change that behavior and have decided that we actually do want that object in our scene, what we can do is we can press the L shortcut key uh, to make local. Um, if we just um, do the selected objects, um, we can see we've now made that local. Uh, but you notice that we've still got this arrow for the data. Um, so we can actually toggle this on and off now. In fact, we can even um, uh, move it around. Uh, but what we still can't do is actually edit it. Uh, that information is still locked in the other scene. So if the uh, artist still is working on this particular scene, uh, we can at least move this out of the way. But um, as soon as they make any changes to the type of, uh, to, to the actual object itself, um, that those changes will be reflected here as well. Um, so if we want to change that behavior again, we can press L and we can see now we get, um, we can just use, uh, just select all. So we can just do the objects and the data and potentially any materials that happen to be on it. So it's just all. Now we can see that it's basically um, 
effectively copied and or appended that object um, rather than simply just linked it. So we're no longer going to get any object, uh, updates from an external scene, uh, but we can now um, edit it uh, entirely. Uh, so we can take uh, any of the levels like the materials or the data for it. Um, but, so that's basically um, the Blender equivalent of the references. Uh, I think there might be some more options which are being worked on at the moment to extend the features within the references there. Uh, but as it stands at the moment, that it, uh, should wrap up the uh, file menu and the equivalents in Blender.